Well, good morning, everyone. And when I say good morning, I mean early, well, or late, but good morning. We're recording today. Um, Bible study up at Grace Lodge in uh, Rhinelander this morning. Um, and my uh, pain medication hasn't kicked in yet, so I'm really uncomfortable. But good morning. Glad you're here with us. Can't greet everybody individually as I do many times because I'm pre-recording. But that's okay. That's all right. We're here together, and we're going to spend a little time in, in God's Word. So I'm, uh, I'm glad you're here with me. Um, today, March 24th, um, snowed again during the night. And um, uh, yesterday was quite a bit of snow. I think we got, I'd say we got three, four inches out here in front of the parsonage. <clears throat> Drinking water, I haven't even made coffee yet this morning. So, <clears throat> but yeah, so I've got I've got the Grace Lodge today. So kind of uh, recording so that we've got this. So let's um. We'll go ahead and get right into the meat of this this morning so I can get it uploaded. Uh, if you have a hymnal, if you have a Lutheran service book, uh, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. And we'll go ahead and get started here as we do uh, with that morning order. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 38, select verses of Psalm 38. But I am like a deaf man, I do not hear, like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear, whose mouth in, and in whose mouth are no rebukes. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, do not be far from me. Make haste to help me. O Lord of my salvation, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from Genesis chapter 29, verses 1 through 30, Jacob marrying Leah. So uh, yesterday we had uh, Jacob fleeing um, to... Uh, his mother's land. Um, today, uh, we have him arriving there in Haran by his uncle Laban. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. As he looked, he saw a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep lying beside it. For out of that well, the flocks were watered. The stone on the well's mouth was large. And when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep and put the stone back in its place over the mouth of the well. Jacob said to them, My brothers, where do you come from? And they said, We are from Haran. And he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? They said, We know him. He said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well. And see, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with sheep. He said, Behold, it is still high day. It is not time for the livestock to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go, pasture them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. Then we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. Now as soon as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's uh, the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, 
and Jacob came near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's kinsman and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban all these things, and Laban said to him, Surely you are, bone of my, and my, are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Jacob loved Rachel. And he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go in to her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Laban gave his female servant Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her servant. And in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Laban gave his female servant Bilhah uh, to his daughter Rachel to be her servant. So Jacob went into Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah, and served Laban another seven years. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Laban is a bit of a deceiver. Um, this is the first trick he plays on Jacob, seeming to be honest. Jacob asks for the hand of Rachel in marriage, and Laban makes a deal with him, work for me seven years and you'll have her. Never mentioning this practice among his people that the older must be married first. And perhaps he thought that in the seven-year period, Leah would be married and it wouldn't be an issue, but it didn't happen. And so on, on the night of the wedding, on the night to the, that they are to come together and be one flesh, uh, Laban slips Leah in, in place of, of Rachel. Now, I don't understand, to be honest, how, how it is that... Um, Jacob would not have realized that it was Leah rather than Rachel. And I guess that doesn't matter. This was what God intended. Um, and the, uh, the the next day, realizing what had happened, um, Jacob goes to Laban and says, what's the deal? And and uh, Laban says, well, finish your, your honeymoon, your week with... Uh, with Leah, and then I will give you Rachel also if you will work for me another seven years. And so he f completes his week and uh, receives the wife he was asking for, Rachel, um, and works another seven years for Laban. So that's the first time Laban tricks him. Now, when the seven years of serving for Leah are over, uh, Jacob will decide it's time to leave and return to his homeland. Um, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna skip over 
the events that take place um, between this and that. Um, but but uh, Leah and Rachel bear children. Actually, initially Rachel seems barren, so uh, Leah bears children, um, and then Rachel cannot, so uh, she gives her her servant girl um, Bilha to uh, Jacob as a wife, and Bilha bears her children, and then jealous of that, Leah gives um, uh, her servant girl. Um, well, let's see who is it. It's Bilha and it's um, and Zilpah it goes into Zilpah and they have children, and finally back to Rachel and he has uh, Rachel bears uh, Joseph um, and later Benjamin, uh, but bears Joseph first uh, with Rachel and Joseph is despised by his his brothers because he's his father's, their, their father's favorite son, or at least a favored son. Um, and it's from, it's actually from Leah uh, that the line of Jesus will come. Uh, Leah bears Judah, and it's Judah's line that will, that will bear the Lord. We don't, we won't get all that because the next thing will be um, Jacob and the Lord battling. But at the end of, at the end of the seven years, um, uh, Jacob decides to leave Laban uh, and move back to his homeland, to go back to his brother and his father. And there's a game played with a sheep. Um, uh, Jacob is entitled to a portion of the, of the sheep that he's been caring for. And um, Laban says, well, you take all the sheep with with uh without spots and i'll take all the ones with with spots or something like that and without reading it exactly i never remember exactly how it goes and and all of a sudden the the ones that laban's supposed to keep don't produce and so laban reverses it he says well you take all these and i'll take all those and jacob says okay and then those sheep don't produce uh for laban uh, but jacob's herb herd continues to grow until the point where jacob has to leave um, because Laban's anger is going to, well, he's going to kill him. And so he, he, uh, he leaves and he takes, takes the four women and, and the 11 children and all his servants and all his flocks. And they, they leave and head towards, uh, back towards, uh, the land of his father and his brother, the Canaanite lands. What lesson do we get from this? I, I don't, you know what, I, um, where's the gospel in this? Well, the, the gospel, I guess, could be this. Sometimes God gives us the stuff we want, and sometimes he gives us the stuff he wants us to have. Um, doesn't mean he takes away the things we want, but Jacob wants Rachel, and he's given Leah. But Rachel comes in time, becomes his wife in time. Uh, there's no overt um, law and gospel here. One thing that's notable is that Laban recognizes Jacob as his bone and his flesh, right? And these are the words that Adam used when God presented him with Eve, right? Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Uh, so Laban recognizes that he is family. Um, you and I are family, not bone of bone and flesh of flesh, but by the blood of Christ, by our baptism into Christ Jesus. Uh, we become children of the same heavenly father, uh, and by adoption, children of God and brothers and sisters to Christ. Uh, we are in Christ. Um, and by being in Christ, we receive all the benefits of, of well, of, of Abraham and Isaac and now Jacob. Um, we become the children of God receiving the heritage of Israel, the promise. 
uh, of the love of the Father and a God who will be our God and we are his people. Um, but not by, not by works, not by things of the law, not by what we do or leave undone, but by faith in him who gives his life for us upon the cross, by his blood, by his, well, yeah, the way Isaiah says it, by his, um, by his lashes we are healed. And so that's, that's a little bit of Laban and Jacob today, tomorrow, a little more of Jacob. But let's look to the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, govern her by your goodness, and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our prayer for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. As I begin a new day with you, search my heart, dear Lord, and purify my affection, so that I may love only those things that please you and may put you first in everything. Help me to overcome the temptations I will meet this day. Strengthen my faith so that victory over the devil may be mine to your glory. Keep me mindful of the sufficiency of your grace. Let your strength be made perfect in my weakness. Give me the grace to guard against sins of the tongue and preserve me from thinking evil in my heart against my neighbor. Teach me the joy of walking the ways of your commandments and bless those who walk in your fear and favor. Watch over me this day when dangers overtake me and ward off any evil of body or soul. If afflictions are to come to me this day, by your gracious direction, keep me humble and obedient to your loving will. Thanks be to you, Lord God, for all your past benefits and for your promises of future mercies. Direct my day in such a way that I may learn to praise you better tonight for the favors of this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all your mercies each and every day. We ask you to be merciful to those who've asked us to pray for them, especially Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Rose, Lois, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Grant them mercy where it is needed, strength where it can be given, assurance where there are but tears, and by your good and gracious will, healing where it is necessary. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. 
that all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that's our devotional time for today. God's peace be with you. I've got to get ready to travel to Grace Lodge. But again, God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Friday morning, right here for our daily devotions together. That, that should be live, God willing. God's peace be with you.